Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today, as you may have seen the title of this video, maybe it is a little bit clickbaity, but however, I'm going to show you our dirty little secret. And such a fucking mess it is. But anyways, without further ado, we will step inside the workshop. So now, I hope no one is too much of a neat freak or anything and isn't spazzing out now in a heart attack at the state of the workshop. I'll be the first to admit, it's an absolute fucking disgrace. There is no two ways about it. There it's, it's, literally, I've avoided doing any video on in here. If I ever have done, I have made sure that very little has been seen of it. It's an absolute fucking disgrace. And I got the green light from my father to show you. We reckon it'll probably make a good video and might get a lot of views, but I'm where it's not something we're proud of. No way, no way at all are we proud of this shed and some of what's in it. But anyways, we we'll look at some of what is in this shed. I'll talk a bit about it. So as you may notice, what's this tractor doing in here? And it kind of if I you go around the corner, you'll um, see. So yeah, that is one of our 6290s. I think it's the second one we bought. And it has been in this shed for two years now, and it was broke down in a field for two years. So it's been, f well, no, it hasn't been in the shed two years. Two years this spring it's been in the shed. So it's nearly been four years since that tractor was last running. I know, an absolute disgrace. So why this tractor broke? I was actually, as well, a busy day bailing with the two 6290s, the two John Deere's going. And me and my father were bailing away, I was bailing on this tractor. The tractor, a couple of days before that, had started doing a lot of what we say is growling in the back end. It's normally a sign of low in oil. The tractor, piles of oil. Piles of oil. Lots of oil, like no shortage of oil. We couldn't really understand, but we kept going anyways. And towards the end of that day, I was in Leitrim, lovely Leitrim, doing a bit of bailing. And the tractor lost drive. She would not drive. I was like, right, what's wrong? All she was doing was growling. It was like there was no oil in her and there was oil in her, lots of oil in her and wasn't driving and it was fair it was getting on, so we decided look at where we we got the most of the bales made that day and we abandoned we, we just parked it and we went home and said we'd go back the next day when the tractor was cool and we'd changed oil and checked the back end filters. That's see maybe there was a blockage or that. So we did that, changed the oil, put put in um, new filters started up. I finished bailing that field, and when I was going out into the next field, same thing happened. Started growling very badly, lost the drive. So we ended up um, having to go get the 6480. We had to tow it out of the way. We took off the baler, towed the tractor out of the way again, put on the 6480 so we could keep bailing. So we were busy again the next day bailing. What we actually never got to the root of the problem, but the presumption is that the, hydro the back end hydraulic pumps are gone in it. There's two pumps in it, there's a primary and a secondary pump. We don't know is it the big one gone or the little one gone or is it seals gone. We literally never got around to that. That happened in the month of July. We went down in November. We were just busy up until November. Must have been some of these days in November. We're like right we'll go get that tractor. So we got the end of a low loader and we bet on down to get the tractor. Could we get it going? Not a bit of us. We tried jumping and we tried everything. The batteries were just too dead to get it going. And we left it. And it lay there for another year. I know, this. it's an awful story. We're, we're awful fucking messers. Uh, it's something I'm not proud of. And I'm, if I'd have been in charge, look, we might have done different, differently. But look, it is what it is. You can't, we, we can't change what has happened. But all we can do is try and... Do things differently, I suppose, best way to put it. But anyways, so we ended up bringing it out of there. The following, must have been September or August, when we went back up and we managed, I think we actually managed to get going. We brought up new batteries and we put them in and we got it going. And it was purely because it was where it was in Leitrim. It was such a journey away from us. Like where, where we were bailing, that's a good hour and a half's drive and or not maybe not about an hour's drive a good hour's drive with a tra in the tractor and it was just because of that we never really got back to doing it and 
the lads we know up there used to be saying, were we, wait, were we waiting for the second one to grow beside it, or were we after planting it? It was there that long. But anyways, look up. We brought it back. We cleaned up the space and we run it into the shed and we said, right, we'll get to that at some stage. We'll rip it and we'll see what's wrong. And then there was a pin needed. Someone lost the pin off the link arms of the tractor and where we're going to get pin, I will get it off that tractor. Someone forgot to put back on the diesel cap and revolver. We need a diesel cap. Where will we get? I will go in and get off this tractor. The turbo was taken off the tractor. Two front wheels were taken off the tractor. The paddle for the dyna shift was taken off the tractor. The clutch was taken, no, not the, the clutch pedal and unit was taken out of the tractor. This tractor, unfortunately, has become a bit of a donor tractor. Um, anything that seems to go wrong, instead of going and getting a bit to fix it, we'll just go in and take the bit off this for handiness. And we'll, we'll get back, we'll, we'll, we'll get another bit. And because of that, as you can see, but, as you can see, it's not exactly doing a whole lot. But oh, fuck it, anyways. You make your depresso while coming into this workshop. But anyways, apart from that, I know I've been saying for a while that I wanted to do a lot of tidying up videos and fixing machineries, and this is on the list. This is on the list to get back going this winter. We might still get it back going. Maybe some of the next videos I put out will be ripping her out, getting them hydraulic pumps going and getting all the bits back on her to get her going and out of the shed because it's a fantastic tractor. It's just a dying shame that we let what happened to it happen to it. But um, Anyways, but because of the absolute state of the shed, we can't get anything in to do up anything and... I'm this I I last year I wanted to do it my father just wasn't in the mood to do it this year I'm mad to do it he's keen to do it but the problem every time I say come on we'll go out here and we'll start tidying he says where we go Paul he says we have nowhere to put it I says we'll put a pile and we'll put everything in and we'll sort the shite from good and we'll get the trailer on we'll fill it with scrap and we'll fucking tidy the place no my father wants to put a loft in and the last bay there so that he can sort the stuff like there's everything here like there's the hub off the is it the teleport or the loading shovel that's what a hub there's a heavy axle there there's a seat there's shafts there's where is it there's a radiator and a water pump to go into my 135 there's the chute of a jf 1100 there's a two row beat sore there's the chassis of an Austin 7 Ruby. There's a drum, brand new Dremor hitch sitting there wait, waiting to go under 3075. There's oodless amounts of stuff everywhere in this shed. And my, father, my father's idea is to put the loft up there. We have shelving over there, take them down and put it up there and then sort everything up onto it that we can tidy the place up. I have done... I, I have tried done tidying before. You can see there's a half ton bag full of rubbish there. And then all the rubbish just got getting pegged at it. It's, I can't actually remember this being completely tidy. There's an oil burning stove in it even. We met ourselves oh, donkey's years ago. I can, I can rem barely remember making it now. I actually, some of the first welding I did, I welded some of the base on it when I was only a Gosson. But... I don't have ever mem mem remembered this fully tidy, but what really led to this getting so bad is when we popped the machinery shed sort of around this shed, we used to park all the machines in this, the combine, the harvester, the balers, ever, all of that stuff was parked in here. And to park it in here, the place had to be tidied out every year and kept relatively tidy so you could park everything in it. When we popped that shit, then everything was parked out there. So then this didn't need to be tidied, so it never got tidied. And it's got to the stage now where you look at it and you're like, where the fuck are you going to start? Like, it's just, oh Christ. And I'm starting to regret video on this because it's just such a fucking shithole. I'll be the first to say it and I'll shout it the fucking loudest. But some of the other stuff anyways is in here. So there's a TVO nut field. That the, it's a petrol nut field that the, my father reckons the big end bearings are gone in that has to be done. We have a Fordson N, Model N tractor as well. And we have a dune buggy that we got for Christmas 
donkeys years ago and I've said I don't know how many times I want to get going but I'm not exactly the most mechanically minded person in the world so look up look up it is what it is. This is why there hasn't been any videos on fixing machinery. And I know I said after the slurry season, that's what we'll be doing a lot of. We've been incredibly busy. I don't know where all the weeks have gone. Just so fucking busy at different jobs. But the plan is now, uh, even outside the door, out there is a shithole too. Because this got full of shit. And we started working machinery out there. So we were taking off. It just got fecked into the corner. There's another mess out there to be sorted. There's beds and moors, there's plow parts, there's axles, there's drive shaft. It's, look, they're not just the tidiest people, me father or me uncle. It's, it's fix it, drop it at your heels and get going again. And I suppose uh, I haven't been on the scene long enough to be able to make enough of a difference. I suppose it's partly my own fault for not tidying. And never mind how my father says, but look, uh, I just... Look up. It's a mess. An absolute mess. But anyways, so we're just going to take a break from this and we're going to go look at an LED light so bar. We're just in the flat now and we'll have a look at this LED light bar. Big thanks to LED Autotech for sending it out to me. If you want to get one yourself, head over to their website. A link will be in the description down below. I will be doing more videos on it later on. Um, installing it and looking at it how good it is but it's a mighty looking light so it is so I have all the wiring harnesses and stuff to go with it so here it is in here so you can see that there that that is an impressive looking light I am very excited to get this light onto something Um, we kind of don't know what to put it on we're Divided between the teleporter if it fits. See, it might not fit underneath the guard, and if it's too close to the guard, there's a, it might get broken, or we'll put on the umbilical system. Now, I won't take it out of the box. It is quite heavy, but it is a massive light, so it is. It, it, has, it looks the part like it. It looks like it's going to have ferocious light. If you actually want to see what it's like, if you go over to their Facebook page, LED Autotech, uh, they have a post about this light and then um, you can have a look at it for yourselves and see what it's like but I will be doing a, a footage on this when when we eventually get around to getting that workshop tidied or when we get a bit of time in the middle of the day that we can go at it because I can't do any video on at night unless I have good lights in a shed because the camera is just now to pick it up but they sent it out to me to give a to use it and try it make a few videos on it see what I thought of it but just, just be looking at it now, like, it's a very impressive looking light. I have all the cables, it's to go straight to the battery so you get full power. It's take quite a bit of power, I, I'd say, but it, it just is a very impressive light. I'm very happy with it, and I can't wait to get it on something. But if you want, hit me down in the comments down below if you what you think we should put it on. I did put a poll up on, Sna on Snapchat, ask you for your opinions, and... There was no clear winner. I had everything from my girlfriend's polo to the 35X, the baling tractor, the umbilical tractor, teleporter, loading shovel, digger. Pretty much every machine in the yard got a vote. But it, for us, it's really down to the teleporter if it fits. And if not, probably the umbilical system will replace the lights on the front of the cab with that, which would give it so much more light. But anyways... We're going to leave it at that. We'll go back out to the shed now and we'll finish off the video. But as I said before, if you're interested in getting a light like this, it'd be a massive job for a hedge cutter. You put on the side of your cab facing the hedge like you get a huge area of huge area lit up. Jobs like that. Roof of a digger, loading shovel, your teleporter or tractor in the yard for doing your winter feeding. Massive looking light. Can't wait to get, to get it on and get using it. We'll leave it at that. We'll head back out to the shed and just go check them out on Facebook and check out their website if you are interested in getting one. So I leave it at that. We'll head back out to the shed. So now everyone, just something I forgot to mention when I was doing that video. I have five shout outs to give. It's quite a lot of shout outs, but five good YouTubers well worth checking out. So first on the list is Farm Life, a young lad from the border region between Loud and Armagh. Does beef, sucklers, sheep, goat, 
goats as quite a range of stuff a lot of nice videos coming out there well we're checking out and um, we also stay in ireland then and we move on to i farm we farm a dairy farmer in calvin well we're checking out a very tidy yard tidy setup lovely lovely cows well we're checking out if you're interested in the dairy farming also then we have mr green dragon tree i hope that's right ever all the links will be in the description down below to head you over to their channels you can check them out there but if you're interested in vintage machinery and looking at the restoration projects of machinery he does a lot on zetters and um other machinery as well but if you're interested in that you can head over there he does i think the right word is picture collages so pictures of before and during and after the restoration project some lovely examples of machinery over there while we're checking off you're into your vintage machinery then we head over to the other side of the atlantic and we have two farmers over there two youtubers over there to get shout outs so, so if you're into your john deere tractors head over to farming with kip sigler uh, a dairy farmer in in america um the the sheer volume of john deere machinery is to me every time i see the amount of machinery in the yard i'm just mind blown it's just i know we've a lot of machinery but there's a lot of machinery there while we're checking off you're into your john deere machinery very nice videos coming out of over there at the maze or the corn harvest at the minute and on the, the their dairy cows and that well we're checking out if you like your deers you like cows and you like what they do be at in the states and then we move up to canada and we have a dairy farmer again on the on the coast i can't actually remember where on the coast but mac farms a massy man well we're checking out if you want to see a bit there canadian dairy farming with the masses involved there's some very very nice examples of masses up there and all is only after recently recently getting a challenger which is a tractor like i would have never seen except for the ones on tracks but it's not one on tracks it's actually it, well look at all the channels there they're well worth checking out they all have their own unique ways of doing things and they're all different you know i know three of them are dairy farmers but they're different they do things differently and look at they're all worth checking out head over there see do you like them you like them hit that subscribe button and you'll be kept up to date with what do they do be at and that's it so we get back into the rest of the video i literally completely forgot about this that shed out there when you go into it you just get put in that mood that you just oh it's just just you know yourself it's just yeah a shed like that will put you in a bad mood but we'll leave it at that we'll get back into the rest of the video so we'll finish up the video in here now and we're after looking at that light a savage light i'll say no more about it. i said all i need to say in there but um, we'll finish up here now. So the plan is that we have we have the timber to go in there. It's in logs. We we bought logs off a cousin, and then my father wants to saw to get them sawed up and build the loft. And we're waiting on my uncle and my cousins who are builders to come do it for us. And we were told probably the end of November, which is coming quite fast, quite fast. So. Hopefully, when they come, we'll get that done. And I'd like to think, by Christmas, this place will be tidy. How like, on a scale of 1 to 100, how likely is it to be done? About 20. I'm not very optimistic on how we're going to get this done. But look, we'll live in hope, and hopefully they come. And look, my plan will be to do a video on tidying this up, time lapse it, putting in the loft and all of that maybe i'll be able to video some of my uncle and cousins doing a bit of the sauna and that with their they have a big wood bench hopefully i might be able i'll have to double check with them but don't hold me to it now i'll have to see will they let me video them working at it but look okay. it is what it is this is our dirty little secret i suppose the tractor is really the biggest dirty little secret in the shed but i i just don't know how else to say it. i'm just going to leave it at that now you can make up your own mind on us we're a shower of fucking messers. I know. Look, you can say whatever you want. I know. But I, on every farm, no matter where you go, you'll always find the corner or a shed where everything gets dumped. We're all the fucking same. But hopefully now we'll get it sorted. That's, that's about all I can say. So Before I get put myself in too bad a mood being in here, because that's all you do is put yourself in a bad mood being in here and looking at the state of the place. 
I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this to keep the place, keep your place tidy. Because this is what happens when you let it go, you're out of hand. But look, we're going to leave it at that. Now, as always, caps never have them. You know where to get them. eBay in the description down below. Amazon store, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. All, everything you want and need to know is in the description down below. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Good luck.